Hello everyone. Um, this is the first video for our week five and maybe second time to study about the consumer choice theory. Okay, so um, in this week, um, you're gonna study very important three concepts about the consumer choice theory. The first one is independence curves. We already studied a little bit. And the second part is the utility function, which is the representations of your satisfaction from consuming based on the concept of independence curves. And the third one will be the budget constraint, which is the bad part of your consumption world because your income will be limited. So we need to think about our consumption portfolio in the limit of your income. So that's the story about the budget constraint. So we're going to study about those three things to complete the problem of the consumer, the consumption, sorry, the utility maximization problem of the consumer. All right, so um, before starting, uh, I have one announcement about the midterm. I will post the official announcement about the midterm in the next few days. So I almost determine the detailed plan for the midterm and I will write down how you take the midterm exam in your house in, at home without meeting the other people in the classroom. That will be pretty tough because I have no similar experience of uh, taking exam um, re remotely. So this is also first time for me to try, but you no, know, we have to try. So I will write down in Korean as well. So you know, there is no one who will be confused with the plan for midterm because of the language. And also, um, the university headquarter is now approaching to resume in-phase lecture type in May or something. I heard some insider stories, but I will post another story or another announcement in our cyber campus to ask you in survey which type of lecture you prefer okay even the hq allow every class to meet each other in may we need to we, we we need to determine by, by ourselves in 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 this classroom okay so um, my principle is if there is one just only one student who prepares to stay away from each other and take a lecture on the internet. If there is an, at most one person, then I will never resume in phase classroom for that person. I think that's the right decision. That's a really conservative decision, but I believe that's the right decision. So yeah, I will, I will post that story pretty soon on our cyber campus too. Okay, so long way to go. Let's talk about very important concept of consumer choice theory, which is called the marginal rate of substitution. What does the mean of the substitution? Which means that if you choose something, then you need to give up something else. And the MRS or the marginal rate of substitution measure your sacrifice of some good in terms of that good, the number of that good or the unit of that good or the unit of dollar or whatever you want. So for instance, this is not the difficult concept. If you buy something, for instance, if you buy the iPhone, if you buy the iPhone, you pay for the iPhone, which means that you give up some money for some certain good, 
which is called the iPod. So that's the kind of substitution effect between the iPhone and your money. So let's talk about the burrito and pizza. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like this, the picture C represents the Lisa's consumption behaviors between the burritos and pizza. What kind of things would you interpret from the graph? If you want more burrito, then you need to sacrifice some pizza, which means that you need to decrease the number of pizza in order to increase the number of burrito you consume, and vice versa for the pizza. So the analysis means that if there are only two goods in the world and you encounter to consume burritos or consume pizza, then there is a choice you have to do, right? So in that position, marginal rate of substitution of burritos for pizza means that a number of burrito you want to sacrifice in order to increase one unit of pizza. The burrito um, is symbolized by large B and the pizza is symbolized by the large G and the equation number one is a definition of the MRS of burrito for pizza which means that you need to you need to one unit of pizza more than how many units of burrito you're gonna have to give up. That's the definition of MRS or Brito for pizza. Okay, so simply the MRS is the slope of the indifference curve at the certain point, mathematically. So let's calculate the MRS of Brito for pizza. So um, from three pizzas to four pizzas, I think that's the piece of pizza, right? So because, you know, three whole pizzas i cannot even imagine that my maximum number of pieces of pizzas i can eat um for one meal in three pieces i cannot eat four pieces of pizza um in terms of the family size so i think the pieces is going to be uh, make more sense okay so anyway three pieces of pizza Oh, sorry, that is pizzas per semester. So it makes sense. You're going to have the three whole round of pizzas per semester. That's a reasonable thing. And you're going to have the eight or five burritos per semester. It makes sense too. Anyway, so three pizzas to four pizzas. That's our first stage. So if you want to increase the number of pizzas consumed in a semester from three to four, then how many burritos you want to give up? It is negative three, right? Because the MRS is the slope of the independence curves. So from three pitches to four pitches, the MRS is the three, negative three burritos. The unit is the unit of burrito. But in the next stage, from four pitches to five pitches, you, you're going to have to give up just two burritos. And from five pizzas to the six pizzas, then you're going to have to give up only one burrito according to this indifference curve. Does it make sense for you? It makes sense to me because have you ever heard about your marginal utility is going to be diminishing? I mean, your first apple will be more delicious than your second apple. As you eat your 100th apple, it's going to be nothing to you because you're already full, right? So your marginal utility will be diminishing as you increase the number of your consumption on one good. So I think the third pizza is more delicious than your fourth pizza. So since you prepare your third pizza than your fourth pizza in a semester, you're going to have to give up more burritos. So it makes sense to me. If you reach to the sixth pizza, then I think you're going to 
be sick of the pizzas because ah, there are too many pizzas in my life. So um, I'm gonna eat more kimbap or tteokbokki rather than pizza. So your willingness to give up the burritos for the same unit of pizza will be pretty much small. So you're gonna give up just one unit of burrito at that stage. So I think this independence curve makes sense for me. Okay, so that's the explanations about this calculation. So how about the difference shape of independence curves? So it is pretty much different. So we can say that this type of independence curve is concave. And this type of independence curves is called the convex to the origin. The convex means polo. So convex to the origin, the zero point is now polo. So it is called the convex independence curve. And Concave means the OMO. So the concave to, to the origin is now pretty much OMO. So it is called concave. So according to the concave independence curves, your MRS of burritos per pizza is increasing as the number of pizzas consumed in the semester increases. Does it make sense to you? I don't think so. Because more pizzas in a semester, the marginal utility for consuming the latest pizza in a semester will be pretty bad, right? So you don't want to give up the more burritos for your last pizza in a semester. The first pizza you eat in the semester will be really delicious because that's the first time. So your marginal utility is pretty high. So your willingness to give up more burritos. So many economists agree that the independence curves have to be convex to the origin rather than the concave to the origin. Can you understand that? So, um, these properties are pretty much important in defining the independence curve. So, the MRS and the independence curve, the relation between those two, understanding that relationship is pretty much important as well. So, could you imagine some exceptions for these properties of independence curves? There are two extreme cases. The first extreme case is the perfect substitute each other. Perfect substitute means by this thing or by that thing. They cannot coexist each other. Like Coca-Cola and the Pepsi or what else? Yonsei University and Korea University maybe? Or Dusan hmm. Bears and the LG Twins in baseball. I don't think that's a good example, but anyway, so you can exemplify something for the perfect substitute each other. The other extreme is perfect complement to each other, which means that if you buy that thing, then you have to buy the other thing all together, which complete your satisfaction or your utility. Like what is iPad and Apple Pencil for your taking lecture. If you take lecture, if you attend the lecture, and you then you have to write down something as the professor talking about some shitty things. If you have only iPad, you cannot write down anything. If you have Apple Pencil without iPad, it is meaningless to your life. So you have to buy Apple Pencil and the iPad together for taking lecture and writing something for the lecture. They are called the perfect complements each other. So let's draw out the graph of independence curves of the perfect substitute and the perfect complement. The left graph is the perfect substitute graph, the Coca-Cola and the Pepsi. If you choose Coke, you don't have to choose Pepsi anymore because you already choose Coke. 
Okay. So there is no coexistence between the Cokes and the Pepsi. So the interference curves is now a linear. A linear means it is the straight line. It is still going downward, so it makes sense for us in the basic properties of independence curves. But this linear line is not convex nor concave to the origin because they are perfect substitute each other. The right hand side graph is the demonstrations of the perfect complement to each other. Now the example is the ice cream and the pie. So I don't know, I don't know if they are perfect complement to all of us, but just let's assume they are perfect complement in this case. Then if you buy one ice cream, then one pie is enough to complete your life. If you buy two ice cream, but still you stay with the one pie, it does not increase your utility. It does not increase your happiness. That's the key point to understand the perfect complement. Even if you buy the three ice creams, but if you still stuck with the one pie, your satisfaction in the same level. Let's remind that every single point on the same independence curve will give you the same happiness, right? So point A, point D, and the point E will give you the same amount of happiness. Even if you increase the number of ice cream, it does not matter in this independence curve. But the point B will give you the certain increase in your happiness because the two ice creams with the two pies are matched well. So, which means then in extreme case, let's compare point B and the point E. Point E, you are consuming three ice creams and one pie. In point B, you are consuming two ice cream and the two pie. Since they are perfect complement to each other, three, three ice creams with one pie does not give you the same happiness with the two ice creams and the two pies, right? So going move up from the origin will give you the more happiness. So I3 in the front curve, like point C, will give you more happiness than I1, like point A or point D, okay? Easy, right? So our normal case of interference curves, like the interference curve with the convex to the origin, like I in this graph, is somewhere between the perfect substitute and the perfect complement. Our normal case of interference curve is between those two extreme cases. So we call the normal interference curve is something like the imperfect substitute each other. Imperfect means there is still some substitution effect between choosing this good and that good, but they are not perfectly substitute each other. You can still consume those two things together and you can improve your happiness. But since your income is limited, you have to choose that one, then you have to give up something which is measured by the MRS. And the MRS is measured as the slope of that independence curve. Right? Good. Um, and the next big concept of consumer choice theory is the utility function. This is a function. Function has a specific form. And the function has the input and the output. So let's look at the definition of the utility function. Utilities beauty is it transforms your abstract happiness into some specific number. So our life becomes really simpler. So how about three and five as a value? Which one is bigger? Five is bigger than three. We can compare each other really easy, but which one is more happier? Consuming three pizzas and consuming two burritos. 
which one is more happier to you? It's hard to say, right? Because it is very abstract and it is very quali qualitative terms. And economists prefer really quantitative values rather than the qualitative values because the quantitative values are easy to be compared to each other. And the utility function is a function which transforms your qualitative values into the quantitative values. So let's look at the equation number two. So the u is the name of the function. And there is two inputs, g and b. The g is the unit of pizza. The b is the unit of brito. And the form of the function is the square root of number of brito times number of, number of pizza. And we know the square root function is the increasing function, but increasing slowly function, right? And we're going to do some example with the special form function. So there are two important properties of the utility function. If we could only rank between our choices, it is really limited information. So in the first curve, will give us the ranking of your happiness. We know one indifference curve is preferred to the other indifference curve, but we don't know how much, how much one indifference curve is bigger than the other indifference curve, because indifference curve will give will give us only the ordinary information, but the utility function will give us specific number of value as an outcome. So it is a very cardinal thing. So we can transform our values of happiness into some specific number of value, like three or 100, something. So we can interpret that as some monetary unit or interpret that some absolute value of our happiness. So we can easily ranking them as well as we can mapping all of these, our choices set on the two dimensional graphs, which will make our life a little bit easier. Okay, so there is some specific relation between the independence curve and the utility function. In what 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 is independence curve? It is the sum of all combination of your consumption. In this case, consumption bundle or burrito and the pizza. And this specific bundle will correspond to a specific level of utility. For instance, we know all points on the same independence curve will give us the same amount of happiness, which means that that independence curve will give us the same value as an outcome of our utility function. So, in equation number three, since we know this guy's utility function is the name of utility function is the u and the input are g and b, the same independence curve will be fixed as a specific number, which is defined by the u bar. Okay, so the same independence curve will give us the u bar of the value as an outcome. Like this. This is three dimensional demonstrations for the relationship between the independent curves and the utility. So the outer phase of utility function is demonstrated late on the outcome. So the, the outliers of this three dimensional something. And each part of the line of utility function, there is specific um, independence curve will give the specific number of outcome, which is repetitive as the face of that utility function. So this is you know, another you know, angle to see the utility function, which is the colored three-dimensional 
thing and this outcome of the function consists of numerous independent curves with different bundle of your consumption choices. So let's look at the definition of marginal utility. How much time? So this is 25. So this is our last page for today's course. The marginal utility is the extra utility, which means that extra your happiness that you get from consuming the last unit of one good. So the marginal utility is measured by a slope of utility function, like MRS was measured by the slope of independence curve. So don't be confused between the MRS and the marginal utility. They are totally in the different world. So marginal utility of good G means that taking derivatives of your utility function so marginal utility of good G is defined by changes of utility function in terms of one unit of change of G. So the marginal utility of good G will be changing over the point of the utility function as expected. Like this. So this is the free view for the next class. So we start from the four units of pizza to the fifth unit of pizza. If you want to increase one more unit of pizza because you love pizza, you're going to get fat as you eat pizza consistently. But I believe the pizza is a good food. It's not my soul food, but I like eating pizza. It is almost a complete food if we control the number of pizzas per semester properly. Anyway, so if you want to increase the number of pizza per semester from four to five, then your marginal utility will be increased from 230 to 250. So the black linear line is the slope of the utility function at the point of five, four. So can you mathematically understand the meaning of marginal utility? So as we know, the formal function is the scale root as we defined before. And we know the scale root function is increasing, but the slope of that scale root function will be decreasing. So since the marginal utility, the slope of the utility function, we also know that the slope of the so marginal utility will be decreasing as the number of pizzas going up. Okay. So that's the marginal utility. Okay. So we're going to stop here for today's course, but I will record again for the next class to complete this chapter.